You know, we often focus on the negative and the doom and gloom. It's just sort of the way that we do things globally. I don't know why it's the global negative news cycle. But the truth is, actually, we are headed in the right direction. Many countries around the world are headed in the right direction. When it comes to renewable energy technology, things are changing incredibly fast. I do think, guys, we are on the way towards being really a net zero global emissions economy worldwide. Within this this space of about 10 to 15 years, I think it will happen. I know I'm an optimist, but if you have a look at the data here in Australia on where we were in 2017 versus where we are today, maybe my prediction doesn't seem so wild after all. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching the Electric Viking. I admit, a lot of my optimism does come from Tony Sebu, who I've been following since 2000, I think it was about 2013, more than 10 years ago. I purchased one of his books a long time ago. I watched some of his seminars on YouTube, and not just his. In fact, I watched some Singularity University stuff from uh, Peter Diamandis, but not just him, but also some other lecturers who were part of Singularity University. And their key issue here is this. 90% of the world lives on the Sun Belt. Solar costs have declined. Now, back in 2014, they were talking, raving about how solar panel prices had gone down so much. But since 2014, while solar panels are a fraction of the price of what they were back then, and their efficiency has, well, it's nearly doubled. Incredible. Here in Australia, we have undergone a, a, a transformation that I believe no one is really noticing. However, the Engineers Australia department, they have said that Australia is kicking some serious renewable energy goals with a significant upswing in generation over the last half decade. And well, it seems to be have been pretty much ignored by the mainstream media here in Australia, who had, well, that'll tell you that everything's going to, we're all going to be dead in a few years and everything's going to hell. Work needs to be done for sure, but we are heading in the right direction. Not long ago, only a fraction of Australia's energy came from renewables. Very, very small amount. In 2017, so only seven years ago, in fact, less than that, only 17% of Australia's energy was generated from renewables. Now, that was the end of 2017, right? Only 17%. The majority of those renewables, though, were things that we can't, we can't, basically, we can't add to. It was hydropower. That has been around for well, decades. Over the last five years, we've more than doubled the amount of renewable energy in the system, said the engineering experts who have been more largely involved in this. In 2023, there was a huge increase in renewable energy generation to the tune of around 10% with 5.9 gigawatts added in a single year. Right now, 40% of Australia's energy actually comes from renewable sources with three key innovations propelling Australia to get to this point. The first of those is actually large scale wind farms, which is a bit of a surprise to some people considering uh, we are one of the biggest countries in the world. Um, about 80% of our country is desert, perfect land for solar panels, but we have focused very much on large scale wind because there are some very windy parts in Australia. Large scale solar is well, the second most important area and rooftop solar, as in you guys, individuals, getting solar panels on their roofs. Like I've just put on my roof recently, um, a, I actually just put a 26 kilowatt solar system on my, on my roof and Resync Solar did this solar system for me. I did hours and hours of research on who was the right solar system company. There are some fraudsters in the, in, in the industry, unfortunately, especially in America, but there's also some fraudsters here in Australia. So Resync Solar, they had, had the best reviews and my experience with them was amazing. I'll put a link in the description, guys, if you want to get a new solar system or upgrade your existing system like I did. They're, they're, they're the right ones to contact and they will give you a discount if you mention me. According to the study, this trend will continue. As in, right now, Right In the month of July, we had our best July ever for installations of rooftop solar. We had our best, best month ever for installations of commercial solar farms in terms of any July in history. And we also had um, one of our best months ever for rooftop solar 
the amount of energy that that's actually generating at the moment. It's clear that wind and solar are the two lowest cost, most proven forms of energy generation today, and will continue to play a huge role in Australia now as we move towards 100% renewables. So when will this happen? When will 100% renewables happen? Well, I, w- I predict they'll happen by about 2035. Some people think that's not likely, but Adelaide, South Australia, which is a state here in Australia, has proven it is completely feasible. And we now have some of the biggest batteries in the world being built across multiple states in Australia. They will soak up all the extra solar energy being sent into the, well, it's being wasted. Much of that energy is being wasted during the day. Um, Some experts in America are saying Australians are creating too much solar by having too many solar panels on their roofs. But actually, that's a good thing. It's kind of like what you guys were saying about in California. You were saying California is too much solar, it's a waste, it's stupid. That's what some of the media were saying. But obviously, these huge batteries will soak up that solar and it will transform our grid, much in the same way that the grid in California has been transformed. So essentially, all we need to unlock huge amounts of free energy, literally free energy, because it's being curtailed, is big batteries. And those big batteries are currently being built. Australians have been doing their part as well. Creditdigital.org.au says that in a large scale sense, wind farms formed a substantial part of the renewable energy shift. 13.4% in 2023 with three new facilities slated for completion in 2024. That will boost capacity. But everyday Australians have played a huge role throughout the with the adoption of rooftop solar with nearly 4 million homes now adorned with photovoltaic modules. And I keep on saying, if you live in Australia and you don't have a solar system on your roof, it doesn't matter which state you live in, you're crazy, you're giving away money. The average savings of the life of a solar system now, considering solar panels now are guaranteed to last for a minimum of most companies are saying a minimum of 25 years with an efficiency rate of at least 80% or they'll replace the panels for you is $50,000. So imagine I came along to you and said, mate, can I have $50,000? Let's say this, this scenario would work if I just approach someone without rooftop solar, someone who owns their own home, especially where I'm, I am here in Newcastle with heaps of sun, just walk up to someone, knock on the door and say, just want, just want to want you to give me $50,000. And I look at you with shock and think, what are you talking about? And I'd say, well, actually, you're, that's what you're doing. You're giving away $50,000 by choosing not to have solar on your roof. Now, obviously, many Australians, 4 million of them have worked that out. But there's another 21 million that haven't worked this out, right? Now, that said, I guess we have 25 million people in the country, but not actually 25 million individual homes. But anyway, the point is millions of Australians haven't worked out the fact that um, rather than complaining about the cost of energy, they can actually solve it. They can fix it themselves because solar systems here are incredibly cheap. There were 337,500 solar systems installed across Australia in 2023. 337,500. Now, there was a lot more of those installed in Germany. Now, I know Germany has a bigger population, but one of the things Germany is doing different to Australia is it's legal for people who live in an apartment to install solar on their balcony. And balcony solar is the fastest growing form of solar worldwide. Well, in Europe, it is anyway, because, well, if you rent an apartment, you can still have solar panels. Just take them away with you when you leave. That's one way Australia could help to install a lot more solar if we legalized that. But still, 337,500 new systems in 2023 equaled 3.1 gigawatts. And that is an increase from 2022. In 2022, there was 315,000 systems. When you build a new house now as well, it has to have solar panels on the roof. For at least the last five years, over 300,000 Australian households per year have installed rooftop solar. Doesn't sound like that many, but you know, we only have around about 12 million households. A key trend fueling uptake of solar and wind and other bat- and other solutions like batteries is costs have fallen drastically. Australia is a sunny and windy place, so we've got great resources, but like anything that's scaled up, as you build more wind farms or install more solar panels, it gets cheaper, says createdigital.org.au. The government has also learned, leaned into the challenge in recent years, recognizing the important role of renewables via a range of incentives. Now, fortunately, the government that's been in power 
has been very pro-renewables. The government that wants to be in power, they are anti-renewables, which is insane. They're more um, nuclear. They think that nuclear, we need nuclear. That's the only way for Australia to have affordable uh, power that is basically zero emissions. Now, of course, that doesn't make any logical sense if you ask me personally, based on the maths of 2024. The maths of 2014, that would be right. Back then, nuclear did make sense. Today, it does not. So, at a national level via the renewable energy target, uh, basically, even both sides of government at a state level have supported large-scale renewables and household solar. And of course, various measures implemented by state gov and territory governments have helped us to achieve what is a pretty, pretty massive change, right? From 10% to 40% renewables. That's, a, that's an enormous difference within a short period of time. And I think it really does prove that it is possible for us to get to 100% within the next 11 years. In Queensland, the government-owned energy businesses are really enthusiastic about contracting and partnering in new renewable projects. Victoria's Renewable Energy Targets Bill provides contracts for large-scale renewable energy projects and big Tesla batteries are being built there alongside massive solar farms. Now, looking at the share of electricity production from renewables, you can see here Canada is well up. It's nearly 70% in Canada. It's incredible numbers there. A lot of that, though, is from sources that are natural, like uh, hydropower. Germany, though, it, when it comes to renewables, Germany is, um, well, they're well out of everyone else. But the United Kingdom is also doing incredibly well. And a lot of that is because of solar farms, but also massive, massive offshore wind farms. Now, Australia does not have any offshore wind farms at all. They have not yet permitted a single offshore wind farm. So we're a little bit behind uh, other countries when it comes to new technology. Can we man maintain momentum? Our coal-fired generation is getting old. It's getting expensive. And the truth is, emissions from coal actually cause premature death. They do. There's no question about it. If you live within a 200-kilometer radius of a coal power plant, in my opinion, you're crazy. Now, I do feel for you if you feel like you have to do that. But you honestly, unless someone's holding a gun to your head, I would not be doing it. Because we know, based on data... Over a 20 year period, millions and millions of Americans died prematurely from breathing in coal, coal dust as much as 100 miles away from a coal power plant. This is one of the big advantages of renewables. We get rid of that coal dust. Over the next 10 years, about 90% of coal generation is scheduled to close down. 90% of the next 10 years. Now, that's pretty close to 100%, and I think that likely that 90% will end up being 100%. That's a huge driver, placing a foot formally on the accelerator in terms of a large-scale renewable energy rollout between now and 2030 or 2035 as well here in Australia. We do need to double the current rate at which large-scale renewable energy solutions are being built and rolled out, according to experts. And that's going to mean more solar farms, more wind farms, more rooftop solar, but more importantly than all of those things, more batteries to store all that energy, all that sun that we're generating, all that energy we're generating during the middle of the day. So when it comes to storage, renewable energy sources actually contribute around 96,000 gigawatt hours in 22-23. When much of our renewable energy was generated by hydropower, there wasn't really much point for energy storage, but now Australia has blown past the 40% renewable mark with 80 to 100% in its sites. So we need battery storage deployment more than ever. Coal and gas can be replaced with renewable energy, but the availability of wind and solar requires we have storage available at night, during the nighttime, particularly. In 2023, there were record levels of investment in big batteries with over $5 billion committed by investors to them. Some of those have been built by Tesla, some of them by other companies. We're also seeing a huge focus on pumped hydro throughout Australia, but whether or not that's efficient or not, that's questionable. And the final part of the puzzle here in Australia is the grid. The grid here in Australia, in some places it's pretty good, in some places it's not so good. 
Along with storage, another key challenge to overcome is upgrading infrastructure, which includes modernizing the grid. Now with electric cars, if we had you know, EVs that can be connected to the grid, that would potentially solve a lot of the need to fix the different parts of the grid throughout Australia. But that might be a few years away. The grid we have was built for the 20th century with a small number of coal-fired power stations sending electrons out to people's homes and businesses. That's kind of the way it's set up and now things are different. A different, more dispersed grid is now required, connecting into regions where there are good renewable sources, says created says createdigital.com.au. The grid of the future needs to recognize that while homes are customers of electrons, they now produce, store, and export them to the grid. Big difference. Recently, a coal power plant went down, and basically the, the grid was saved from having a major blackout by electric cars that were plugged into the grid. We need a much smarter grid where there's a lot more interconnectivity and digitization of electricity at home, say experts. That means when people step into their EV when leaving the office, it sends a signal to the home to automatically switch on certain appliances such as lights and heaters, relying on power in the home battery charged up during the daytime when the solar panels on the roof were at maximum energy producing power. You might then plug them into your car, your home, but, but, but basically what you do is you know plug your car into your home when you, when you get home and the systems won't, might say, hey guys, now it makes sense for you to use electricity. High demand for electricity in the community or the grid at peak times could lead to significant incentives as well. When demand drops off later in the evening, the system might prompt the user to charge up their car. The next morning, the battery's power is replenished by the rising sun. This type of system would be similar to what's happening in California today, where California's grid has been transformed by big batteries and Tesla virtual power plants. Is Australia on track to reach net zero? Well, there's no doubt that it's gonna be a challenge, and there's no doubt we need to do more. But I believe, based on these numbers, seeing this increase from 10 to 40% within only a matter of about five or six years, it's very much possible that we can get there. Now, some of these big batteries will unlock huge amounts of renewable energy in the grid that are being wasted. So in a sense, batteries are adding electricity to the grid. Of course, we need to do more. And one of the things I think incre that encourages people to get solar is buying an electric car. So the more people we encourage to buy an EV, we tell them how great EVs are, we'll give them a, a test ride in our EV, the more people are likely to buy one. When you get an EV, you go, hang on a minute, why would I not have solar? It's brilliant to have solar. Let's install solar panels and have EVs. And really that's a, a big part of the solution here in Australia. But let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching.